You're not filming this, are you? <laughs> f you! <laughs> f you! That's real loud. Blow harder, Finch. Finch, blow harder. F you! Did you try sucking? Suck on it. <laughs> f you! <laughs> you were, you monster! <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, Patrick here with Rap4. It is Monday, November 18th, and this is Monday Night Paintball. To my left, I have Anthony from ODSC. Behind the camera is my buddy Finch. He's the official field tester for all of Omar's latest designs. All right, first thing we got going on is a new item in our catalog. It's a remote line for a TPX. So this remote line is only for pistols, and um, Anthony's actually gonna pick one up today. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Uh, the line is a lot thinner, um, so having it maybe from the primary marker, I don't know, for myself, I wouldn't be as good. I'd like a thick line for my, my primary, but um, I'm gonna be running that on my uh, RAP226 that I have. I'm actually adapting an external air uh, RAP226 to uh, take that line, so that way I don't have to worry about running out of air when I'm using it. Cool. So yeah, you can run a remote line to any, any pistol size thing. He's actually going to jury rig his 43 cal to work with it, um, but it would be able to like, you know, drop in a TPX or anything. So that's new on the catalog. Pretty cool. Um, next up we got the Rhino mounts, or the MVG mounts, for our helmets. So we've sold these, these TAC helmets for a while, and they've got that mount on the front for the um, night vision. And now we have actually have the, the mount itself instead of just the uh, mounting point. So that's cool for those of you running um, night vision or even if you had like a GoPro or like a camera you wanted to mount, that's a really cool mount. It's right there in the center of your mask, um, depending on how you rig it, it won't be in the way. Even if you don't have anything to mount on it, it just gives your helmet a more you know, military look. So that's pretty cool. That's new to the catalog. We have that in three colors um, to match the rest of your gear. Um, Finch, fold the gap. Oh, fold the gap. Yeah, so Finch went to fold the gap a couple weeks ago, flew out there. And apparently it was awesome. What's up, Finch? How was it? A lot of, a lot of paint colors out there, but Mac had made a huge impact. Uh, almost every push, there was a Mac Fed player at the lead with first strike, just running on the front line. It was, it was pretty fun. It's cool. And Mac Fed Friday was pretty exciting as well. I'm actually currently downloading 50% of your footage, and it's. 12.43 gigabytes. So talk about the Mac Fed Friday. What was that about? I honestly did not play Mac Fed Friday. I was a little too busy in Bender Row, having a grand old time introducing myself to everybody and meeting all the cool guys and hanging out with Star Pursuit. <laughs> um, but Mac Fed Friday is, I think it started last year, it was the first time they did it. It was a Mac Fed only game on Friday, the day before Foldy App. And I don't know if there was any points or anything that allotted to the actual gameplay. But it was magazine fed only and there was over 100 people out there flying all day on Friday. That's the biggest mag fed only game I've ever heard of. We've we've got over 100 people at Inward before but not 150. Next one would be the one on D-Day we had, the Bastown. I think that was like less than 100, so. Cool. Mag fed, growing on the East Coast. We don't have much of a presence on the East Coast. Mag fed is huge on the East Coast though. Yeah. It is a huge? It's huge on but the East Coast. But we're just not big on the East Coast. Nope. That fix that. No, well, Omar and I made a huge impact with. Cool. In fact, we uh, there was a kid, Wyatt Gibson, got to field test one of the BTRs all weekend long. You know, it really sucks for him because he has a 468, and he can never go back to that 468 after using a BTR all weekend. Well, the BTR's got that whole different trigger. Mm -hmm. it feels totally different. It's so beautiful and sexy. Yeah, I really like the uh, the new trigger on there. Omar did a good job. Yeah, kudos to that. Yeah, everybody likes that. So. You shot it at uh, Enwar, right? Yeah, I did. I, I took it out for like the last half a day for Enwar. Yeah. I love it. The trigger pull's amazing on it. So, I mean, functionality-wise, you know, the trigger's different, but, you know, in the marker itself with the regular 468 up, or, you know, it performs just like the regular 468. It's just the trigger pull's the main difference on it mm -hmm. when you're using it together. But it was good. Got a couple good shots. Nice six pound. Yeah. We had a uh, easy up that was given to us by Dead Man's Hand. Very nice of them to. It's one of our sponsored teams. Help right? us out, yeah. 
No, a lot of the East Coast, everybody was saying, but nobody knows who I am. I'm walking around and I, I'm hearing left and right. Dude, I hear Omar's here. Oh yeah, he's the one wearing that three-piece suit. Well, that, <laughs> okay. Then he was wearing his uh, Go Freak On Operator's vest the, the other two days. But his what? His, that uh, Pakistani nice vest that you guys got, that only one of them has a test and KT didn't like them. Omar took it. Which one is that? Super nice. It, even, it had the... Uh, triangle velcro on the side so it looked like a security guard vest oh his uh his jacket yeah his jacket his jacket okay i'm, I'm imagining like a tactical vest i mean no. like i have all the samples in here um okay yeah yeah right his jacket yeah, yeah he rocked that the rest of the week those samples those soft good samples when they come in those Amazing. are some of the coolest stuff because it's like something we, we choose not to sell anyway but so <laughs> we just have one and it's like well it's we didn't amazing. pay for it so she's sitting here. We're not going to sell it. So dibs. Yeah, it's definitely a dib dib moment. Yeah. When the samples come in. Cool. Fold the gap. Can't wait to edit that video. I'm copying it right now. Uh, Get that guy's out to you soon. And I have 64 gigs. Of, Get that out to you guys. Um, interviews too. And 64 gigabytes. 64 gigabytes of interviews. Wow. That's a lot of interviews. With uh, Caglioni and Caglioni. Doug Brown. Doug Brown. Eric Angler. Eric Angler. Geo from Tiberius. Tiberius. Um, Some guy named Geo. Number of players. Cool. Yeah. It's good. Um, speaking. It was. <laughs> What's this about a game with Doug Brown? Oh, yeah. Doug Brown and PsyOps challenged ODSC to a game. PsyOps, that's a Milsig team. That's Milsig. So Milsig's boys versus Rap Force boys. Oh, no. Showdown's going down. Where? Well, the some of the guys we were talking to in Texas that we might um, make an OD. I'm always cool. down for a good match. Yeah, so hey, ODSC is going to uh, play against PsyOps, which is the Milsig team. And we just got to figure out the details. But and we'll, whichever matters. What everybody did. Are. Cool. Um, do I have any videos or anything? PsyOps? Or that particular... How does that run? Are they all in Texas or what? Oh, PsyOps is not Texas. They're what? Uh, East Coast. Like, oh, East Coast. It's a venue. Oh, we're just going to meet halfway in Texas. Chicago somewhere. This thing's still blinking, right? Yeah, still blinking. Um, a Lincoln. Did you say a roll, a, Lincoln. a roll is a roll and a tall is a tall. That's so we will have more details for you guys on the PsyOps ODSC game coming up. We also have some rumors about other ODs starting. Right, Finch? Oh, yeah, ODNC is... Northern California. Soon. Yeah. Oh, so we're going to bust that one out yeah. soon. Yeah. There's a bunch of people that are interested in it more locals. Yeah. Uh, speaking of scenarios coming up, November 23rd at 9 a.m., Team Tactics Paintball is hosting their seventh advanced scenario campaign entitled Operation Green Zone this November. Entry is capped at 50 players and registration is only available online prior to the event. There will be no registration available on the site or the day of the event, so be sure to sign up soon before spaces fill. Registration closes November 1st. So only capping at 50 people? Capped at 50 players, interesting. I wonder why. Why not? I mean, it's not that many people. The more the merrier, right? Interesting. Each player is required to dress um, in according to their team outfit. Red team is camo only. Blue team is private military contractor look, so no camo. Very specific. Only 50 people, you have to dress in like this. I've never heard of this before. Yeah, well, I guess it's easier to, to yeah. enforce those regulations if there's only 50 people on the field. No need for our men if everybody is wearing or what they should be. Players will only be allowed 1,000 paintballs for the entire event. Woohoo! Half a box for an entire event. That's a lot of paint. That I only go through 500 in a day. Myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's if we're going against speedballers or people that you got to dump against. So for the fee, um, you get unlimited air, a thousand paintballs, two smoke grenades, misspelled grenades. <laughs> Photo and video will be taken to commemorate the event. Camping available, and an overview of the missions and handouts. 95 euros. So this is... In Europe. European. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little uh, 
Foresight you missed out on it? Yeah, that was like at the top. That's the only thing that says... Anything? It has a, it has longitude and latitude as their location, which is like great and everything. But it's kind of like what we did for anywhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so what are you going to talk about? <laughs> Next scenario, November 30th at 5 a.m. This one's $39 American. This one's called Black Hawk Down. Milson Paintball Unit, Viper 6, who were sponsored by RAP4 at one point, I remember. Don't know if they're still doing that. But Viper 6, that was our team. They all matched, we're in ACUs. Uh, they're putting on an eight hour um, night op game on November 30th at the Capital Combat Zone Paintball Park in Brunswick, New York. Players will be broken up into two teams, Somalian Rebel Army and Americans to battle it out in the pitch black night in both woodland and urban environments. Sounds like a rolled ankle Waiting to happen. fiasco. <laughs> Middle of the night, um, walking around in the woods. At Florida Gap, some kids at the night game, like, oh yeah, I, I just bought first strike rounds just for the night game. And I was thinking to myself, why are you shooting first strike only at the night game? Why are you shooting first If you have nods, dude. Game? If you got eyes at night, then like yeah, but yeah you, you don't could have do the visibility some work for the reach for the first strike. It's it, worthless. It's uh, worthless and bounces count as a hit. Night There's vision. No hits. It bounces our hits in night games. The PBS 14s, the ones that, like the one-eyed ones that we got issued, those things were great. I could see just fine with that. I could drive. I could do everything with those on. So if you had a pair of good night vision, but I. Those aren't oh. those like retarded expensive. Those yes. are Gen fours, aren't they? Retarded. Uh, I don't know. Expensive. I don't know, let me Google it. To be exact. Like 14 grand. Previous 14s, uh, two and a half grand. Oh, that's not bad. Just for people. Optics, oh, yeah. Optics Planet, 2200 bucks. I mean, if you. Looks very familiar. You can justify it to the War Department. Gen the 2? The War Department. The, that one's Gen 2? Yes. Gen 2 for 20. For Which one's better? Is it the the higher the generation, the, the better. better it is? So you got Gen military 3 is, for 2800. Military is issued Gen 4 and above. I think there's Gen 5, is there? Yeah. And huh. I think six Thermal Vision was cool. Enough. That was cool. Thermal Vision. Because you wouldn't just see a guy, you would his nose would be like darker than he'd look like a skull. And he, like that was cool. There's ones out, it's a monocular, and it's got thermal and infrared at the same time. But it's or huge. One or the other. It's so the size of like a blender, isn't it? No, it's not. It's quite we had those those thermal vision ones no, were no, just the, like this footballs, is tiny. man. It's just the same size. It's smaller than the PV14. We could only mount it to the the like the guns that were mounted to the truck because nobody wanted to carry that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a noise too when you turn it on. You turn it, but it would stay. It would get annoying. Anyways, I don't remember what that one was. We had some kind of thermal. That's old school thermal. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's old school. Whatever, it worked. Um, cool. So they have a night game. Viper 6. Awesome. Are you going to bring thermal to that? I'm not going to go to that. That's in New York. Well, no plans to go to New York. And just, you know, night games in Northern California, there's a couple people up here who have a night vision. And I'll never play a night game because all it is is whichever team they're on wins. Yeah, you can't. I've been laying in the ground crawling for a What are you going to do against that? And a guy walks up to me and says, hey, you should just surrender. I see you. What do you do at that point? What I would I probably just put up a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just roll just over and start firing in the darkness. And then they get mad at you. Go out and have No, what, what I've seen is the problem now, with the, the night games. What you I've, better yeah. lose. What I've seen with the problem with the night games is one of two things. Uh, because of the um, humidity in the air, as it cools down, it starts getting a lot, not just fogging on the lenses, but actually condensation of, of water. So you're actually dripping on the inside of your lens. It's something you can't wipe. People get really annoyed after and just give up and stop playing. And the people who rock the night vision goggles, um, night vision's great if you know how to fire your weapon with the night vision on. I have. Well, night we had we had this these uh, packs PEQs. Yeah, the fairly stand for I, when I was in a pack four, it was still pretty big. Now they're all like tiny and cool. Yeah, uh -huh. But, um, and that shot the infrared laser that you could only no, see through night. I have an infrared laser as well. I have nice. one myself. And if, if you don't have that on your scope, your scope's basically useless. You, you, you didn't just see, see the you, dot, you would see the line to yeah, the dot. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah, mine's not as strong. Um, you have the, the FDA clearance on certain wavelengths of, of lasers, right? Um, so you can only have a certain but strength. But pack 4s and pack 15s are just fine because it's in the uh, infrared 
that corporate yeah. spectrum, so it doesn't even affect that. Well, I think it's the, the, the wattage is what I'm talking about. Oh. Mm-hmm. Different watts that are cleared by the FDA for use as... There was a so rumor yeah. that if you, if you shined a PEQ in somebody's eyes, uh-huh. they, they wouldn't see it, but they would start to like go would, blind and be dizzy so. and yes. stuff, yeah. even, though you, even though you don't see that. Uh-huh. So they were like, yeah. there was like jokes about pointing at Iraqis or something and like they start <laughs> getting all weird and it's kind of messed up. But. You can edit that part out. <laughs> you know, I didn't they, do it. You know they actually have uh, microwave emitters yeah. that they shoot at Iraqis. And Micro- I've heard microwave about that. It just makes it feel like Is that the burning. one that makes you like crap your pants? No, it's the one that makes oh. you feel like you're burning. Yeah. And they can, and they won't go. You're being microwave. Yeah, basically. Yes, they you're can be setting on. You're being that baked can kill from the outside in. A thousand feet away in less than five seconds. Are you kidding me? Desert. They have that? Yes. They How much does that cost? It's a death ray. More than we can yeah. afford. <laughs> Effing death ray. I want a death ray. <laughs> How much does a death ray cost? I don't know, but what I want is the SDI program. Uh, like the Not that I want to hurt anybody. I just want to have a death ray. I mean, I would probably just use it against pumpkins it's and stuff. An organic space laser that <laughs> shoots. From the organic spaceship? Yeah, that just shoots out. Oh, organic spaceships. Titanium yeah, that'd be good to mount it on one of those. It Seriously. shoots out titanium It heals balls. itself, and it travels through space. <laughs> okay, for those of you who don't follow, there was a joke at NWAR 4 about an organic spaceship. It wasn't a joke. <laughs> Bastard, it was serious. We okay, dead. Finch was serious. Yeah. The rest of us laughed. It was a joke. <laughs> about, about an organic spaceship. So you might see some memes out there with Finch's face on the dude from History Channel about <laughs> the ancient aliens. Oh, yeah. And then you see some pictures of some organic spaceships with Finch's face superimposed on them. And that's probably going to have us cracking up for a little while. Thank you, Patrick. But well, if you weren't there, you probably wouldn't understand it. But oh, and tactical chairs. And tactical chairs, yeah. I wasn't there for that. He that's killed two chairs, two fold-up chairs in the middle of the night. Did he break them? He, yes. he broke one of them, yeah. One of them was out of commission. <laughs> Well I just stood up with so much vigor that my feet went through two different legs on two different chairs at the exact same time. Didn't even notice. And I stood up and they collapsed on my legs. I was just glad it wasn't my chair. I just bought it that day. Next scenario game, we got December 1st at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for $45. You're going to get to play in Doomsday scenario game. On target paintball. You get to, cha- you get to choose between being a prepper and a savage in this post-apocalyptic paintball scenario game. I choose Prepper. I choose Savage. Oh yeah. You'd rather just, just like... I, I, I want to be a reaver. Just, just, wanna, just totally like ambush just the Preppers. Just all over you. Just take some bread, spray paint, just... What was that, what was that, um, the video game that it was like in, in like a post-nuclear... Fallout. 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 Yes. Yeah, those Savage guys are like wearing parts of tires. Yeah. And people's yeah. clothes. <laughs> I could totally make a cool kit out of tire. <laughs> Spikes on the tire. It's Just my, this is my little shopping cart tire. Uh, shop, shopping cart tire uh, mag pouch right here. Just walk away. This is my um. And nobody will be. My duct tape sling. Just walk away. Cool. Um, registration for forty five dollars gives you entry in all day air. A white box of paint is going to be sixty dollars plus tax. A mid grade. It's going to be seventy dollars plus tax. White box is low grade. Apparently, white box is low grade and mid grade is seven, and there is no high, no high grade for you. You get none. Well, you're paying seventy dollars. <laughs> Who wants high grade at that point? Has, has anybody taken a gas mask and made it a legal like paintball mask, like a field? I'm pretty sure they people use them, but they're not feel legal because they have they don't to be cover rated. the ears. They don't cover the ears. They have yeah. to be rated. I don't, and also they're actually touching your face. And if you got hit with a paintball in the mask no, that was actually well. touching your skin, I'm pretty sure the welt would just be bigger. Tr- would just, you know, go through. Kinetic energy. Anyways, Doomsday scenario game, December first. Check it out. Uh, here's a picture. Um, somebody posted on our Facebook page. I just reshared it this morning, and I thought it was really cool. This is a picture of Kevin Phillips. Looks like an M249 saw, so you got a bunch of different accessories that make it look like a saw. And I, I believe that used to be an A5. A5. With the tack, it's an MK5 now. With the MK5, right, MK5. yeah. MK5. Yeah. I have one of those myself. So he took his A5, made a mag fed, put on a whole bunch of accessories, and now it looks just like a saw. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, what else have we got? It's also got a flexi air on it, so the air through. Interesting. Next picture we got up is from Punisher's Wreck Ball in Uruguay. 
Thanks guys for repping Rap 4. I see a few of those Sidewander tactical caps being worn. Very cool. I think I mentioned in a previous episode, there's a lot of, actual, of mag fed going on in Latin America. Awesome to see you grow. Next picture, we got a picture from Doug Jr. I seem to share one of his pictures every episode, and I think he knows that, which is why he posts them on Monday mornings. And this one is a layout of all of his gear. Looks pretty cool. He's got a bunch of mags. Um, so he's running a 468, and he's the one that has a different upper fort. So he's got a sniper upper fort too. And he's got a TPX with Zeta mags. And he's running 6D mags spread out on his kit. Um, some comms. It looks like the same camera as you. What kind of camera do you have, Finch? Drift. A drift? I think that's a drift. Where's yours? Can't see that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a drift. Same one. Good camera, by the way. Best on the market? I think so. It's kind of big, though. This, the uh, profile, though. Look at that. That's Straight on, not so much. And that's all that the person is seeing when they're shooting at you. That's cool. So, thanks for the photo, Doug. Awesome as always. And I think that's all I got this week. We are going to shoot the oh, hey. PTR. Oh, show them the PTR. This is Finch's, I'm sorry, no, this is Finch's PTR. Um, he brought it to Fold the Gap. This is his weekend plinker. So this was originally set up by Omar for Operation in War 4. And I stole it. And then Finch stole it. <laughs> and he's got his iron sights on there in a very interesting way. I guess you might as well. Do you seriously like? I don't. You you want me to, to have get up all in this? You are the one with your that mask on. Iron sights up. I those are Omar's iron sights, and I think they're. You just do you just so you just shoot from like over they're here because so this latch was just gonna be like gonna rip my nose off. I don't bring my face down. You do like just like this. He does the tactical blind fire. It's like this. The tactical blind fire. Oh, dude. Oh, those <laughs> tactical pie concepts or whatever. Yeah. Those videos are hilarious. You guys see the come at me bro drill? Yeah. Come at me bro. That was the funniest one they did. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is Finch's PTR. It's pretty cool. I'm uploading tomorrow the MagFed only game photos for MFOG6. So that's for November. I'm going to upload them tomorrow. I, have, I still haven't even done the video for MagFed only game 5. And if you want to get your MagFed fix in for next month, we're having our next MFOG at SE Village on December 8th. You guys can do me a huge favor for those who actually attend to watch this. Come early, that way we can get on the field early. Everybody who straggles on, we end up getting late on the field because of the stragglers. We got uh, 10 free rental markers for people coming out who don't have one that would like to try one out. Um, you know, we have uh, a turnout of last, last uh, event was about 60 players, so uh, it's grown pretty big. December 15th. It's December 15th? December 15th because the Spartan race got moved to December 8th, says Kusha. Oh, I'm running this. Okay. Just just to update that, I just got that today. You got uh, it today? I didn't talk to Kusha about that, but okay. he just told me today because he asked for the flyer. Okay. So he said it's December 15th is the next MagFed only game. And the last turnout was like 60 players. Yeah, we have a good time. Uh, we have a professional photographer comes out and uh, makes us look good for everybody. So, uh, you know, you come to the event, you go on the Route 4 or MFOG webpage a couple of days later, you'll find pictures of yourself. Um, we have uh, food, you know, it's all included in the cost, so you don't have to worry about buying yourself lunch. You know, we have Gatorade and stuff like that. So, you know, you food, come out Gatorade, photographer, yeah. MagFed, be there. Get it. <laughs> <clears throat> cool. So, we're going to end this one and I pay for all. My face with Finch shooting the Empire Defender. Can I take that grip Last week I reviewed it. Can yes, you can take the grip off. In fact, could you get on that? You should take that off now. Thanks. Thank Last week I uh, took a look at the Empire Defender, but I didn't shoot it. So this week we're gonna shoot it. So um, let's go. Get no bag of paint for me. Damn it. You dirty bastard. He's shooting my freaking gun. 
<laughs> Welcome to my world, Finch. Like a kid in the damn candy store, man. I know, I, I won't get to shoot that until this weekend. <laughs> that makes me even more mad. But at least we know the batteries work. There's no indication until you load up paint. It's off. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that look of fear? Yes, you were I aiming at my nuts. <laughs> All right. Let's do a range test. Try not to hit the sign, please. So wow. that was a hopper on a 13. A hop? No, that's a, what happened to the 17 I gave you? It had a leak. So you got a full hopper out of a 13 and then some. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. What is that, 200 paint balls? Uh, 200, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's not bad at all. And so what do you think of it? Dude, it's not bad. Did a good job. It's comfortable too. Go re-air up the tank and we'll test it out a little more. Maybe I'll give it to Finch. Alright, I'm gonna give it to Finch. Here you go, Finch. You need to get air. I'm getting a finger wave. What's up? Fun gun and Okay, time to get air.